Hey everyone, welcome back to Envelope Doom Miniatures. My name is Deets and pray so should you're here. As you know, I've turned into a bit of a Chaos Dwarf fan recently and today I'm going to paint up this 4th edition Chaos Dwarf Lord on Great Taurus for you. So buckle up and let's get into it. So this mini is nothing short of special and if you do have one you should probably pat yourself on the back because they are pretty hard to get. They are fetching pretty hefty prices on eBay. And so after my last video, a top bloke reached out to me and let me know who's willing to sell his to me for a great price. So thank you so much mate, I really appreciate it. Now this thing is a really heavy chunk of a mini, it's all metal. And I do hear a few things about people complaining about how metal models, you know, they're, they're hard to paint, they're kind of hard to to assemble, they kind of fall to, fall to bits and whatnot. So they really do need to be pinned. So I wanna make sure I do this thing right and pin it right the first time so it sticks together and never ever falls apart. Fingers crossed. Now I just quickly measure up the center of the base and I make sure the bull is nice and center. Then using my hobby knife, I draw my first hole for where I want the back hoof to go. This model has a nice little nub on the back hoof so I have a nice spot to glue it to the base. Then I get my hand drill and make the hole a little bit bigger so the nub can slide in nicely. Once that is done, I mark some paint on the front hoof using a Posca marker. You can just use paint for this. And then I place it into position and I push down the front hoof onto the base so that it marks where I need to drill my next hole. I get my drill and make a nice little hole for the wire. You don't need to go too crazy deep for this, just about five mil or so. Now I trim some wire and super glue it into the hole. And then when that's dry, I draw my second smaller hole just using my hobby knife. Then I double check it's all good. Then I proceed to slap on some super glue. I just use a small amount at first, then slide on the base. Once that's down firmly, I grab my loop bit of wire and I place that tightly around the nub. And I apply some super glue to this. This just gives it something to stick onto and gives it a bit more support. Then I trim the other piece of wire, push it down and then add some super glue. And there you have it, the ball is now all pinned, nice and firmly in place and it's not going anywhere. Now for pinning the chore floor, and I cut some cork in half and fashion a little saddle for it, just using my hobby knife. Then I drill a hole in the butt and in the cork. Then I feed the wire through and then super glue it into the chorf's butthole. Very simple stuff and that little cork saddle will fit nicely onto my little painting handle. Then back to the ball and I just use some PVA glue and some fine sand just to get that grass effect. Usually with my primer I go for white to keep it bright but with my chorfs I'm going with a black primer. Now painting this mini is going to be a little bit of an effort for me as it will be the biggest model I painted. The previous record was held by an old Orion Wood Elf model. So I decided to get the big bull out of the way first and paint that. I'm not really used to painting something with so much surface area and all muscle and stuff like that. I'm used to painting, you know, smaller models like high elves and whatnot. I went all over with a thin coat of corn red to the body and the outside of the wings. Then I used a thin down flesh tear as red wash all over. I then used Abaddon Black on the hair and the bull snout. I glazed this area a little bit so it had a nice transition and wasn't so stark. I then went all over the hoofs, the tail fluff and the wing membranes with Abaddon Black. Now back to the reds and what do you highlight red with? Red. I used Evil Sun Scarlet to the raised muscle areas being careful not to put any in the cracks. I also use this to start highlighting the bull's face, neck folds and wings. Then it was time for some Wild Rider red highlights all around the muscles. I carefully placed some semi-thick lines mainly to the top of the muscles with some even strokes. This part was tricky as I just placed the highlights where I thought they needed to go. I just wanted to make the areas pop and be a little bit more readable. Now for the final highlight and I used Duncan Rhodes Too Thin Coats Orange Flare and I only applied this as a skinny highlight to the tops of the muscles to emulate some light and I also added some spot highlights to the wings and also to the face area. Now for the horns and I used Carrick Stone and a super light wash of Skeleton Horde. I mixed up one part Abaddon Black to one part Stonewall Grey and blotched this at the ends of the horns. I then washed this down and started glazing it towards the ends. This was a little bit tricky as some of the angles were hard to reach, but I survived. I always survived, I just kept going. I then glazed some Carrick Stone from the other direction until I was happy with the colour transition. While I had this grain mix out, I thought I might as well use it, so I used some to highlight the face, the lips, and the nostrils, and the hoofs. And then I used some pure Stonewall Grey to highlight the hoofs. 
just using some little lines on there to make it look a bit worn. Back to the horns, and I added some carefully placed streaks of bone white to give it an ivory look. I mixed in a little bit of white to the bone white to give it some small little lines and highlights. I was really just winging it with the horns. I had a photo kind of sitting next to me of what you know some horns looked like, and I've never really painted these before, so I feel like I was doing pretty good trying to emulate some worn ivory tusks or something like that. To start off some of the wear, I did some small nicks of black and highlighted around it with some pure white. And to finish up, I then mixed two parts stonewall grey to one part Abaddon black and highlighted the tips. Then I mixed in some more stonewall grey to the mix and then just did some small little streaks to the tips of the horns as well to finish up. So the horns are done, now it's time to do the little nose ring and I just used some gun metal on that, then gave it a wash of nun oil and then just did a nice little highlight with some silver. Now the next part of the process I wasn't really too happy with in the end but you know, I still did it and if, if I had my time again I'd probably do it differently. I used a mix of Abaddon Grey and Stonewall Grey to highlight the strands of hair and to highlight the wing membranes. I slowly mixed in a little bit more Stonewall Grey to build this up until I was happy. I then used some pure Stonewall Grey on the tops of the wings to make it a little bit brighter. I didn't do it on the bottom of the wings as I thought you know, I needed them to have a bit more brightness on top. I also did this to the strands of hair After this, I used a null oil wash all over the wings to try blend it in and kind of blend it together a bit more. So the bull is done and now it's time to move on to the fun part, the chalk lord. Now you've probably seen my last chalk video so I won't go too heavily into it. I'll put a link in the description if you want to see how I paint the skin. I used Cadian flesh as the base, then I gave it a wash of Gulliman flesh. I go over some Kislev flesh. And then I slowly mix in some Pallid Witch flesh to highlight. Now for the most dreadful part of the mini, the eyes. And for the first time ever, I actually managed to film this, so I'm very proud of myself. I slap down some dried bark in the sockets using the side of my skinniest brush, and then I plop in some pure white and just do a small dot of dried bark, just taking my time. I've had a few people ask me what brushes I use. I don't use anything special. I just use an Army Painter fine tipped uh, detail brush. It's nice and skinny and just does the job well. Now for the base coats, and I'm gonna keep this guy similar to the box art. I did a similar process to my last chores, but this time I'm gonna put down corn red as the base coat for wherever I want the red. And I'm gonna paint the hat opposite and have red on the inside of the hat instead. I use techless blue for the little cuffs and the hammer highlights and the hat highlights. And then I put down some Vallejo bronze flesh tone for the yellow base coat. On the box art, he has an alternating yellow and black beard, so I'll stick with that. After this, I just went back over the black areas with some Abaddon Black to clean up, and then I used some Carrick Stone for all the cool little skull parts. After all the colours were down, it's time to put down some gunmetal all over the hat bits, the little arrows, and the hammer. I just took my time with this because I hate having to clean up TMM. It's just better to take your time and just do it right for the first time. And now it's time for some washes, and this is pretty straightforward. As you can see here, these are all the washes I used. I used some watered down flesh tear as red for the red parts. And again, it was good to take my time, especially with these little hat parts, because you don't want to make too much of a mess. I used Seraphim Sepia straight out of the pot for the yellow areas. Then I used a washed down ultramarine blue for the blue areas, making it sure it settled nicely in the cracks. Next was a wash of watered down skeleton horde all over the cool little skulls. And last up was everyone's favorite, Nun Oil all over the gunmetal. Now with the red highlights, I used the same reds I did with the bull and put down a nice coat of Evil Sun Scarlet just inside the hat, being careful as possible not to touch the skulls, the gunmetal, or the blue. I then add another highlight of Wild Rider Red and kind of glaze this towards the top section of the hat to emulate some light coming from above. I also use this to highlight the top of the hammer. And last up, I use some orange flare again as a final spot highlight and I just added this everywhere to the top section of the hat, to the hammer, and just on the tips of the little scales. I went back over the techless blue, glazing it on some sections, then adding a small amount of blue horror to the mix 
and then slowly highlighting with that. I glaze this in the areas where I wanted some nice transitions. Lastly, I use a spot highlight of Blue Horror, just to the tips of the blue. For the yellow, I used a small amount of Uriel Yellow as a highlight and then used my new favourite colour, which I just acquired, Dawn Yellow. And I use this Dawn Yellow for a nice little spot highlight. Now this yellow combo I have going is probably my favourite yellow combo so far. I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely a keeper. For the black, I use the same technique that I used for my other chorfs. And I just slowly mixed in some Administratum Grey to some Abaddon Black and then built up the highlights until I was happy. And I used the final spot highlight of Administratum Grey. And now for the fun part, the part I always love, the skulls. I slapped on some Bone White for the highlights above the eyes and nose and worked that all over until I was happy. Then I mixed one part Bone to one part White for another highlight. And last up, I just did a spot highlight of pure white just to the tips of the teeth the eyes and the cheeks. Now there are a few skulls on this guy but I wasn't complaining because I really do love painting up some skulls. Now we're in the home straight and we just have the true metallic metal left. I went back over this with gun metal. I like using this with a little bit of a mix of water and slowly glazing on certain areas. It's nice to build this up slowly. I glaze this upwards on the hammer to make it look like it had some shine. After I did this all over and when I was happy, it was time to do a silver highlight. And again with this, I use a glaze method slowly adding it to the areas where I want it to glisten. Now it's important not to go too hard with these silver highlights. Sometimes I do get carried away and it turns into a little bit of a mess and you kind of lose that contrast. So just take your time and just put the silver where it needs to go. So praise the shoot, we're now finished the painting and now it's time to pin this bad boy for the last time. I remove the chalk from the cork and then trim the wire. And just like before, I mark the wire with a little bit of paint and then place it down where the chalk will sit. Then I drill a little hole, being careful not to chip the paint and then super glue them down super carefully. And that's pretty much it guys. And here it is, the fourth edition, Chaos Dwarf Lord on the Great Taurus. Thanks so much for watching guys, I really appreciate it. And if you want to see some more Warhammer Fantasy get painted up, make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like me to paint next, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.